In this video, we are practically going to understand how we can create a multi-agent system using Autogen framework. We are going to leverage the different built-in classes that Autogen offers us, few of which are the user proxy agent, the assistant agent that we already have dealt with, and we'll also talk about the group chat manager in one of our upcoming sessions. But in this particular session, we are heavily going to leverage both assistant agent as well as user proxy agent. So let's discuss about the problem first and then try and understand how you can implement or solve that particular problem by using agentic workflow. So the problem here is to generate a plot between a couple of company stock prices listed on NASDAQ, let's say Meta and Amazon or Meta and Apple. We are going to consider Meta and Apple stock prices of last 12 month and then try and generate a plot so that we can compare on how the stock price varied over time. So that's the problem here. The complete process has to be autonomous in nature. So we'll create a user proxy agent and an assistant agent as well. So as we can clearly observe from this particular block diagram, both assistant agent as well as user proxy agent are extending from conversible agent, which is our base class here. So the conversible agent has got this innate ability of enabling the conversations or exchanging the messages between agents. Since all the properties and attributes specific to conversable agents are now inherited to both assistant and user proxy agents, the assistant and user proxy agent can exchange messages. And if there are any issues in between, both these agents can talk to each other and resolve those issues and finally solve the problem that we are trying to deal with. Right? So assistant agent, as you can clearly see, is tightly integrated with a large language model, which will typically act as a code generator for us. And the user proxy agent will act as a code executor for us. You can also see this human symbol here, the annotation of human, which indicates that there is a presence of this particular parameter called human input mode. The values for human input mode could be never, it could be always, it would also be terminate, it could be either of these. If at all the value we are providing is never for human input mode, there is no chance that the user is going to provide an input in between the exchange of messages between user and assistant here. If it is always, then for every single message exchange, the user is asked for feedback. And if it's terminate, once the code execution is complete, at the end of code execution, there will be a request for the user to provide the feedback. So these are three different values that are possible for human input mode. We can choose one of these values based upon our necessity. So what is the caveat here? So what is that we are going to gain by asking for user input? So whenever user is inputting or providing the feedback during the execution stage, so we are dynamically altering the environment associated with the agents based on the user input. As and when the user provides an input, asks for something else in between, so the environment associated with the agents also changes dynamically. So that's the whole purpose of it. But we're not going to leverage both of these values will only be using terminate here so that the user is going to provide one single feedback at the end of code execution so that the entire process that we are going to build is completely autonomous here. Now the code execution config is yet another parameter that we are going to implement. We'll try to discuss more about it while we implement it. Cool. Since we have gained a thorough understanding of both user proxy agent as well as assistant agent, core idea here is that we initiate a chat between user and assistant agent let the agents talk to each other, let them solve if there are any issues and finally come up with a result. The result of the stock price plot in between Meta and Apple here. So let's first import OS module. I'm going to leverage OS module in order to read the environment variables that I have defined here in .env file. Let's not talk about how I have derived this OpenAI key and how I have set this base URL for now because that will be our subject of our discussion in our upcoming session, but not now. So OS module is what I'm going to leverage to read the environment variables. And let's also import these two different classes called assistant agent as well as user proxy agent from Autogen. So I already have installed this necessary package called PyAutogen. If you're looking at this particular left hand side parenthesis, we are now pointing to a new virtual environment called Autogen-VENV where I already have installed this PyAutogen package. Okay. So we have imported both these classes, assistant agent as well as user proxy agent. Along with this, let's also import load underscore dot env so that I can load the dot env file that I have placed in the same repository here. I'll also define what model I'm going to make use of 
for all my API calls. I'm going to leverage this GPT-40 model for all my API calls. And then I'm going to define this LLM config, which is going to be used in both the agents. The LLM config will have multiple parameters. One of the key parameters is what is the model that I am planning to do API calls for? That's going to be GPT-40. What is its API key? The API key is going to be the key that we have set up in .env file, which can be derived by os.environ.get. The specific variable name is openai underscore key here. Along with this, let's also define the base URL here. The base URL again is os.environ.get provide the respective variable name which is going to be openai base url here i can also set additional parameters here called as cache seed provide a value to it and temperature probably a zero so cache seed here is basically helpful for us in order to reproduce the same responses again and again cache is a subdirectory that gets generated while executing this agentic workflow basically is going to help us avoid unnecessary API calls. Let's say that you have requested LLM for about 10 different times asking the same query. There's no point in asking the same query again and again and unnecessarily wasting the costs. That's going to increase your cost exponentially, isn't it? We know how costly it is to make all these API calls. That's when the cache is going to help us. Cache generally has this hash table of key value pairs where the responses, the LLM responses are being stored for different questions. And whenever you encounter the same question being asked again, so we do not unnecessarily do an API call, but we leverage the cache that's already been saved. And the value for cache seed is to make sure that you get the same responses for the same question being asked multiple times. For not providing cache seed at all, that's totally fine because there's a default value of cache seed that's being assigned always. Temperature here is set to zero. Basically, when you want your LLM responses to be completely deterministic, you always can adjust these values based upon your necessities here. I'm not going to provide both these different parameters, just explicitly stated them for your understanding purposes. So once the LLM config is done, let's create this assistant agent by making use of this class called assistant agent. And we basically provide a name to it. The name here is going to be assistant. We'll also provide a system message. System message here indicates the role of this particular agent. So the role here is going to be code generator. So I'm just providing a text here stating that you are responsible for code generation. You're responsible for code generation. And then please communicate with user agent and fix any issues. And that's it. So once the role is being defined for the agent, let's also provide the LLM config that we have set up in the previous step. And that's all. So we now have created this assistant agent. Let's also create this user agent by using user proxy agent class, where we also provide this name. We also provide the system message. The system message is definitely going to be the role of the user agent. The role of the user agent here is going to be the code executor that we already have discussed about. So we again retain this particular data as is like please communicate with assistant agent and fix any issues ask for user feedback at the end of code execution right so this is an additional responsibility that i'm adding to the user proxy agent and we clearly know that human input mode is going to be terminated since we are asking for user feedback explicitly at the end of code execution code execution config here is going to be the working directory that we are planning to set. The working directory that we are planning to set here is going to be the name of the subdirectory that will include where the intermittent Python files are being stored. As I have mentioned, this particular assistant agent, since it's tightly integrated with LLM, it's going to leverage this LLM to generate the code. So whatever code that's getting generated by this assistant agent is now being stored in this working directory called as coding. That's the whole purpose of it. Along with this, we'll also set an additional parameter called use Docker. If at all, I'm having a Docker file, I'll just provide it here. Otherwise I'm just going to leave it as false. So we'll also include the LLM config, which we have forgotten so far. LLM config is going to be LLM config again. And that's all. Since we have created 
the assistant agent as well as user proxy agent now is the time that we basically initiate the chat between user and assistant and we'll also pass the initial message the ask here is to plot meta and apple stock for last 12 months that's all so this is the initial message that i'm planning to pass right probably quit clear this here in the terminal let's run this whole code now if you are looking at this particular terminal window user is asking to assistant to plot meta and apple stock for last 12 month so this is the conversational behavior that i have been talking about so there's some error here so we observe this particular error is adj close so probably the agents try to rectify this error let's see how it does it okay if you are observing we have this cache folder and coding folder being intermittently created now we get this particular error again and again we can basically end this execution and then try and rerun this code let's wait for the code execution to complete yeah there you go so you are observing this particular plot that's being generated which comprises of both meta as well as apple stock price for the last 12 month data right so the complete process that we have implemented is autonomous in nature so what exactly happened so user basically asked assistant the initial message that we requested for the assistant basically generated the code the user executed it it found some error sent the request back to the assistant assistant rectified the code it provided clear debugging steps in order to fix that particular error whatever error that it actually found and then the code is updated the user proxy agent reran that particular updated code so as to generate the plot that we observed so we need not end the process in between we can wait for the complete process to be completed anyhow if you are observing carefully coding is a subdirectory that we have provided here which is a working directory where the actual code that's been generated by the llm is being stored and this is a code that the user proxy agent is being executing at all and then we also have this cache folder which i was mentioning about the cache seed the default cache seed value is 41 so cache.db is acting as a hash table which comprises of these different key value pairs and it's going to help us avoid unnecessary api calls and thereby reduce the overall costs effectively yeah, I believe you have pretty much understood on how this two-way chat works, how the chat between user proxy as well as assistant agent works and how we try to solve this particular problem. In the upcoming session, we basically would try to understand how I derived this particular OpenAI key as well as how I have assigned this base URL here to this environment variable. So that's all in this particular session and thanks for watching.